and get it. We are live. Tara Lazar, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm really in awe of all your work, uh, not only as an author, but also on, on behalf of the writing community. And we have so much to talk to that to talk to to talk about that um, I doubt whether we'll cover all the bases today. But then I'm going to invite you back because you are so special. Um, so uh, my name is Mel Rosenberg. Before I forget my name, and I am the host of the Children's Literature Channel, the New Books Network. And this is a special event because I am speaking to a wonderful author. It's the last recording of 2022. And by the time our friends uh, on the New Books Network get the podcast, it'll be 2023. Wow, so, Tara, look, looking in look, the future. <laughs> how about that? So, um, what's what do you have um, planned for 2023 before we start digging into your past? Um, sleeping, resting. That that's always good. Um, <laughs> I have one book coming out in 2023 in September, and that is called Flat Cat. Flat Cat. So September. Flat, flat Cat. Flat Cat. And that is my only book of 2023. Listen, you know, um, as I tell my uh, audience, uh, only one in a thousand or five thousand authors gets a publishing deal, especially when it comes to picture books, especially regarding authors who aren't illustrators. And uh, you are not only one of those five thousand, but you're a multi, multi uh, author. Uh, you have won many prizes, and uh, people love you. And uh, I automatically love you. I'm a little bit insanely, um, I'm going to say, jealous. Um, of your capabilities. Um, I just wanted, you know, just to get that out there at the beginning. Um, so uh, 2023, you have a new book coming out called Flat Cat. And in 2022, I know of two books uh, that you have out. Um, we are going to talk about Time Flies, Before Time Flies. Um, and the next time we'll talk about Absurd Words because um, I love Absurd Words. Thank you. Uh, uh, so these are the ones that we will talk about everything, 789, 9811, and uh, 711, and <laughs> whatever, and Story Storm. Oh, my goodness, there's so much to talk about. So, uh, Tara, let's start at the beginning, the beginning of Tara Lazar, um, and uh, you take it from there. I'm going to drink my coffee. <laughs> uh, the beginning of Tara Lazar. Well, it was a summer's day in 1970. Um, <laughs> so I've been around a while. Um, I always wanted to be a writer from the time I was in second grade, but I was very practical and pragmatic. And I knew that I couldn't make a living being a writer right out of college. So I wanted to get a job in publishing. Maybe I'd be an editorial assistant at a children's publisher. And I tried to get that job. But when I got out of college, we were in a recession. It was very difficult to find a job. I did find a job in publishing, but it was in professional technical reference books for computing. <sighs> so, um, I worked in that job for about nine months before, you know, I got tired of eating ramen noodles for dinner. Um, and I got a job in high tech instead. And I, I wanted to be able to support myself without my parents. I wanted my own apartment, my own car. You know, I wanted to be completely independent of my parents. And I was. And I worked in that job for a decade. Uh, before I even started to write for children. It was only after I had my own children that I began writing for children. Um, One second. Um, so hold on, hold on. Let's... Yeah, I'm out. Okay. No, yeah, no. What... <laughs> you, you've, you've, you've run so quickly here. So um, a word about your parents, the Mayans? 
Yes. My parents divorced when I was young. And so uh, I know you've spoken about this with other people, uh, but my age, my internal age is eight uh, because that is just second grade. It's, it's when I wanted to become a writer. It's before my parents separated. It was, it was a good time, second grade. You know, Gloria Vanderbilt jeans and clogs. It was a good time. And uh, what did you study in college? I'm assuming you went to college. Yes, I went to Rutgers College. I studied English and we actually, we didn't have a creative writing major, but what they had was called a specialization. So you could take uh, writing classes within the English major and you would get a writing specialization, which I don't know, doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, took writing and English. And um, what were you like as a young kid? What was I like as a young kid? As an eight-year-old. Same thing. I don't think I've changed. I don't know. Okay, kind we'll try it. And wacky and, you know, honest and kind and, you know, yeah, it was just kind of the same. I, I haven't, I haven't grown up from that eight-year-old. Okay, that's... I'm wearing that's, a sweatshirt with flowers on it. That's a good thing. I have my puppet right here. And you should. <laughs> um, so, so um, you were interested in writing. I'm recapping now before we head forward. Uh, and uh, you were in a high tech. Did you have an exit, or you were a uh, entrepreneur? No, I worked for a kind of a publishing company. the The company produced reports on the industry, and so I would edit reports. Um, I would produce all the marketing materials. Uh, I set up the website in 1994 before anybody knew what a website was. Um, so I did all the marketing and publicity. Uh, I was, that job had a lot of writing in it. So that was very good practice. Okay, yeah. and then- And then, and then writing, you're... but still writing. And then the, your kids started to be born. Yes. And you woke up one morning and said, oh, I know, I'm going to write picture books. Well, I, I wanted to, um, and it just never seemed like the right time. Uh, my first daughter, I never slept. She did not sleep. So in turn, I did not sleep. And if I don't sleep at least like 10 hours a day, I am very grumpy. So I was too grumpy to write with her, but then I had my second daughter and um, I kind of got the itch again. So uh, I saw it, an advertisement in my local paper, local paper. Wow. It's been a long time since there's been a local paper, but it said, you know, are you a woman? Do you like to write? Join women who write. And I was like, ah, that's brilliant. I'll join. So I said to my husband, can I, you know, one, once a week on a Tuesday night, uh, not once a week, once a month on a Tuesday night, can I go? He said, sure, go, go for it. Have fast. And uh, I joined when I was about seven, six, seven months pregnant and went to one meeting and then they broke for summer break. And then I was ready to go to the next meeting, except then I had my daughter and blah, 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 blah. A year later, I'm back. So <laughs> I started in earnest about a year after my youngest daughter was born. And okay. now she's 16. So <laughs> 2006, 2007? 2000, yeah, end of 2007. Like, and you already had a book out in 2009. 
No, I sold my first book in 2010 and it didn't come out until 2013. Uh, yeah. So, but, uh, but you started, you started the precursor of story storm around that time. Yes. Around 2008, uh, mm -hmm. 2009, I started story storm. So this is before you were published. You wanted to help other writers. Because there was nothing, there was nothing for picture book writers at that time. There was NaNoWriMo uh, that went on in November and it was for novel writers. And I was like, great, but I don't want to write novels. Um, what is there for picture book authors? I was jealous. There was nothing for us. I wanted there to be something for us. So that's why I created it. And I thought, you know, maybe 10 people would join me. And now there's like almost 2000 that join me every year. So it's just a little crazy. I didn't, I didn't know if it was a good idea or not. I just said, you know, uh, I, I you can't write a picture book a day for a month. That would be nuts. Writing a picture book in a month isn't a challenge. Uh, you need lots of ideas. You need lots of ideas to get to a good idea. Now, I, I was watching your interview with Elizabeth Law and she said, I'm not a writer because I don't get any ideas. I think she should join StoryStorm and then she would get some ideas. But, you know, for maybe like every 30 ideas, there's one good idea. So you got to get through all the bad ideas to get to the good one. So that's why I started it. Okay. The, the, the issue of why some people edit and some people write is a really good question. I don't think that we're going to discuss it today, but we can the, at a later <laughs> date. Another time. I have, Another I, have my, I have my own thoughts because I work with uh, Harold Underdown, who's, uh, I think, incredible. Yeah. And he doesn't write, and I can't get him to write. Um, so uh, there you go. Um, even though I think the writing is more fun than the editing, but you know, whatever. Um, so without being a published author, you started something that turned into an avalanche. And the, the best ideas are maybe the ones that start out like this. I'll do something small and we'll see where it gets us. And it turned into a storm. So Nano, Bido, Remo, Bimo became Story <laughs> Storm. And now you have, you've created a, mo a monster. Um, I have to be careful when I talk to you about monsters, uh, not a monster, a monster, um, where thousands of people say that in January, they come up with one idea a day, and they swear at the end of the month that they've come up with 30 new ideas, uh, which is which is, which is is terrific and a great uh, contribution, I was going to say to the industry, but it's really not an industry, is it? It's more of a religion than an industry. <laughs> It's uh, it's great. I mean, people say all the time, oh, you know, my book that's coming out that was started as a story storm idea. And I'm like, why don't you email me and you can come on the blog and talk about it? Because that inspires a lot of other people to do it and to come up with something. Um, well, you know, it's it's a story storm time. Uh, today is December the 29th, approximately. Uh, and Story Storm starts in two days, ah. and or three maybe. <laughs> and I'm going to join you for the first time. Great, love to have you. I'll be there. I'll be there with the other three thousand people coming up with one idea a day for a month. It's it's really just you know it's a relaxing little, and it gets you into a habit. They say it takes thirty days to make a habit. So hopefully it becomes a habit for the rest of the year that you have daily idea generation and then you have something to work on throughout the year. Okay, and um, so everybody out there uh, who is an author, wants to be an author uh, or to invent things or just to have fun, uh, it's free. It's uh, on the internet, it's on Facebook, there's a website. So please join us, I'm a newbie. And the um, perpetrator, Tara Lazar, uh, as we come up with 
30 ideas in January 2023 for StoryStorm. Taralazar.com. That's all you Yes. And, and, uh, and this is my New Year's resolution for, for January. Great. It's a great way to start off the year. I think so. Um, so, um, and also it's free. Yes, so are, free. are you, are you one, one of these Michigan people that believes that we should help each other for free? Well, you know, uh, what I try to tell people is that I, I don't want Story Storm to become a job. If I charged people for it, it would be my job. And that is not what I want my job to be. I want my job to be a writer, a picture book writer. And um, also, if I charge people, they'd expect customer service. And <laughs> I'm not customer servicing 2,000 people. Um, and also, there are a lot of ways in this business to uh, spend money before you make the money, right? And I want to help alleviate that because, you know, you could pay for an MFA if you wanted to. You could go to conferences. You could go to retreats. You can pay for critiques. You can do all these things and they all cost money. <laughs> and uh, why pay for another thing? Some, some of them cost the farmegan, as the Jews say, which is a fortune. <laughs> Yes, and uh, let and 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 you're offering this for free, which I think is really uh, exemplary. Um, and now let's go back now, and uh, this yeah, and discover time flies backwards uh, in my uh, in my world, uh, and and uh, and discover how you became one of the uh, initially one of the five thousand, and then one of the million. I, I didn't become one of the million. I'm still working on that. <laughs> That's what the one in a million says, Tara. <laughs> well, Time Flies is the third book in the 789 series. Started off with the book 789. And my intention with that book was, let me think what is a joke that every elementary school kid knows told on the schoolyard? What is that joke? And I thought, why well, was it so afraid of seven? Oh, so seven, eight, nine. And I said, okay, seven, eight, nine. That's a great time. Let me write that book. And I immediately started thinking about, all right, six is afraid. He, he hires a private eye. <gasps> Oh, a private eye. He's a letter, and the other characters are numbers. And I just kind of went on that path, and it came out very quickly because it was such a good idea, and I was so excited about it. Um, wait, wait, was this your first? Um, so, like, you, you you keep skipping forward here. Oh, um, I skip forward a lot. Sorry. So, yeah. So, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. Uh, I wanted to be a, a picture book author, so I uh, took courses, went to meetings, joined the critique group, um, did it by myself. What, what did you do? I I went. I joined this group, Women Who Write, and it was a critique group for children who wrote um, any kind of genre, and you could join whatever group was your genre. So I joined a children's literature group, which meant not everybody wrote picture books. Some people wrote novels, um, YA and MG, and uh, middle grade and young adult. And uh, I joined that group. Uh, the other person in that group with me uh, that I know today, and we're still very good friends, Lori Walmark, who writes, yes, Lori Walmark, who writes books about, she likes to say, dead women in stem and that's that's her shtick um but Lori and i were in this group um eventually i left the group because the group was not many people in the group were just hobbyists um and i was very serious i was going to uh conferences from new jersey scbwi 
Uh, I was reading books. I was reading craft stuff. I had my blog. Um, I was doing all these things and not everybody in the group was doing that. And I found that I was ending up teaching them and I needed to learn. So I left that group and uh, I was introduced to Corey Rosen Schwartz, who wrote Three Ninja Pigs. Hi, yeah, pork chop. Um, and uh, we had a small critique group for a while. And I was just in that group when I came up with the idea of the monster. And I wrote the monster and Corey looked at it and said, Tell, this is it. This is your breakthrough manuscript. You gotta submit this. And I did. And now here I am. Okay, and so I the mo the, the, the mo <laughs> so so uh, it was the monster that you submitted before seven, eight, nine? Yeah, the monster was my first submission to agents. And um, I managed to get my agent with that manuscript. And uh, how did that happen? Um, initially, I sent the monster into a mentoring event with New Jersey SCBWI. And um, at that same time, I had been struck with multiple sclerosis. And I didn't know it at the time but I was sick. Things were going on with my body that I didn't understand. And I actually never made it to that mentoring event. You had to submit your manuscript in advance because the person you were paired with would, would work on it and then present you with the results during the event. But I couldn't go. I, I, I canceled. Um, and Lori, my friend, happened to be working at New Jersey SCBWI and she was working on the event and she called me and she told me, you know, um, your mentor really wanted to meet you and was very upset you weren't there. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'll go on. Yeah, sure. And she then mailed me the mentor's comments and it was a thick envelope and I let that envelope sit on my counter for weeks because I was afraid to open it I'm like it's probably a lot of criticism about how terrible this manuscript is so I you didn't, didn't open it I didn't open it for weeks I let it sit there then when I finally opened it the first thing it said is I love the idea and the concept. And I'm like, oh, she liked it. And then everything that I read was very complimentary. She did give me some notes about how to improve it, but it was very complimentary. And then I said, well, maybe Corey was right. Maybe this is my breakthrough manuscript. Hmm. So I worked on it based on the notes from that editor. And um, I then started sending it to agents and I tried a few agents who were known for being quick turnarounds and the first agent got back to me and said got back to me with like in 24 hours and said this isn't for me but I think it will be published and that gave me a lot of confidence which I did not have and so I sent it to like maybe four other agents. And out of that, I got a couple of phone calls and uh, I signed with Amy Joan Paquette at Erin uh, Murphy Literary Agency. Ta-da! And she's still my agent today. Uh, yeah, uh, this is, you, 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 um, you, you, what's the word? You preempted me here. <laughs> be be <laughs> because. No, because you have the same agent, but you hop around publishers like a bloody grasshopper. Yeah, I you can't have keep. To. Well, you have you to. you you published <clears throat> with Little Brown the trilogy, and now oh, first it was Disney. 
And yeah, then and Disney sold their backlist to Little Brown. So now it's I, Little I Brown. I can't keep track. You have books with <laughs> Sourcebook and Tundra and and the and many Simon more. And Schuster like, and yeah. House and Sterling and um yeah, uh, Harper Collins. You have yeah. to hop around. Gone are the days where a publisher would hire you and then invest in you to keep producing books and stay at that house and nurture your career. And those days are long gone. So if you want to be multi-published, you have to find people who want what you're producing. After I did the Mon store, um, the next book I wrote, that editor didn't want. So we had to go elsewhere. Um, and then after that one was published, then the editor didn't want the next thing I wrote. So we had to go elsewhere. You know, you you have to go where they're buying. <laughs> or let, else let, let, let's go back to your New Jersey gold. Um, okay. Because essentially what you're telling me, forget about me, you're telling thousands of people here, is uh, unbelievable that you uh, sent a cold query. Um, some people call it a query uh, uh, to several agents um, and they read it. And more than one wanted to represent you. Um, well, you have wanted to represent me. Well, okay. But, 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 but I, I got to, I got a couple phone calls out of the deal. <laughs> okay, so this is the one in a thousand. Where is this query letter? Have you ever? Well, it, it's not, you know, what I tell people with picture books, the query letter is not important. You might as well just forget. And people get really nervous about writing a query letter. And for picture books, it's not really that important because you're also sending the manuscript. Now, if an agent has limited time and they have the manuscript in front of them, they're not going to read that query letter first. They're going to go right to the manuscript. That's what I do to save time. And then if they like the manuscript, they will read the query letter to see, where'd you come from? Who are you? What's your background? And make sure you're not a complete crazy person. And then they'll give you a call. <laughs> and only a partially crazy person. Only um, partially crazy. So I, I'm going to, I, I'm not going to argue with you because what do I know? Um, but if that's the case, then maybe we should just, and I, I agree with you. I mean, for a 500 word uh, manuscript, who needs the query letter? Um, but put the, the query maybe letter put the is a cover letter it's not yeah. a party letter when it comes to picture books maybe it should be letter. tara maybe it should be a mattress letter in other words uh <laughs> st start out with the uh, with the bed linens put the manuscript first and then the cover letter right because right. I, I agree i agree with you I, I i i'm i'm trying now to do things differently um and i am uh i sent i sent the shortest query letter in the history of mankind, it's like four sentences. Because That's all I said, it needs to be. Th there's so many different uh, uh, viewpoints on this. So I, I'm, I'm treasuring what you have to say. Uh, so Tara, everybody says the query letter isn't as important as Not having a wonderful manuscript. Book. Okay, yeah. wonderful. I, I, I'm if the whole manuscript. Then you don't, know, don't fret over the cover letter, the the query letter. And yeah. and you were not you were not a published author, and um, your father wasn't president of the United States, and you just submitted a wonderful story, uh, the story about this the thing about this kid who keeps collecting monsters because they won't accept a, a refund. Um, it it it's great. Uh, you are a quirky uh, idea person, if ever there was one. Um, but maybe the the did Monster make you famous or seven eight nine because I know you from seven eight nine. Famous what? Yeah, uh, Monster did not. They had high hopes for the Monster, but um, unfortunately, 
it kind of came out the same time during the Monsters Incorporated franchise from Disney. And I don't think you can have two monster franchises competing at the same time. So even though it's a great book, um, it was even optioned to make a movie, um, which never came to fruition. Uh, you know, it just didn't get the level of attention I think the publisher wanted or even I wanted. Um, but it's a great book. I mean, a lot of people tell me it's their favorite book of mine, and it was my first one, and I just lucky. Okay, and uh, and then uh, I I can't keep track. I have a whole list here. Um, was uh, was seven eight nine the, the one that came out after uh, Monster? No, Monster, and then I thought this was a bear book. And then I think Little Red Gliding Hood, and then Normal Norman. Normal Norman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think I've lost track of of when they've come out, but um, yeah, Monster was first. Seven, eight, nine was like my fourth or fifth book, maybe. Should have been your seventh. You know, seven is so popular. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been good. And that's like a three book deal. Yes, but it didn't start as a three book deal. It started as a one book deal. And then 789 did pretty well. And they said, hey, give us. Uh, oh, and then I wrote the second one. And when they got the second one, they they gave me a contract for two more. So they took the second one I wrote and the third one wasn't written yet, but they contracted but it. But at the end of the at the first at the end of seven eight nine, Private mm -hmm. Eye gets a phone call, which is like a pre uh, pre preempting uh, the next uh, book. Except I didn't write that one. <laughs> yeah, two calls him. You know, I yeah, got to right. change my number. Um, but yeah, I I tried to think of something to come up with that <laughs> to like come up with two having a problem and I couldn't come up with something so we went to something different okay that explains it yeah I couldn't come up with I mean that was just the way I ended that book and I thought that book was going to be the end of things it was and just then, like a, a, it was just like a thing that like to end the book it was just but um bump you know it's a rim shot at the end of the book and then uh, I, when I wanted to write a sequel because you know seven eight nine did pretty well, I was trying to think, well, what am I gonna write with the numbers? Ah, I'll go to letters, uh, the uppercase. You get it? Yeah. So I wrote that instead. <laughs> so here, 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 this is my question. Um, people tell us us the um uh, the um Aspire. up and come up and coming or up and not coming uh tell us uh, don't write a, um uh, i've just written a manuscript about uh, musical notes oh no no that's terrible you can't uh, personify them you can't personify letters you can't personify numbers and what i'm wondering because you did such a great job um if that were your first manuscript would you have encountered the same flack do you think i don't you know there are some editors who don't like uh anthropomorphication um and some do i have no problem with writing uh inanimate objects as characters as long as they're imbued with enough personality i, I think it works I happen to like it. Not every editor likes it. I'm going to write what I like, and I like it. I love it. And, 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 and kids like it. And, and when you say that you're actually writing to your eight-year-old, um, it, it makes sense because these are a, ostensibly picture books, but they're like high-level picture books, and they're full of puns. And, um, and I think that the... Um, 
the ability of parents to understand a different level, a different layer in your books. Uh, and then the kids who want in on the reason that their parents are chuckling, so they now can be in on your uh, on your puns and the quirkiness, um, is is one of the great things about your writing. Well, I mean, I, the puns are are something that's understood by older children, like you said, but with the story still makes sense whether or not you understand the puns and it's still a funny story and it's still got twists and turns and it's still an exciting interesting story if i were to strip out all the puns yeah but i'm but thinking if i were if i were a little kid and and, and all of a sudden my dad is chuckling about something and i said daddy why is that funny in, in other words i think there's um, it would be interesting to hear from your many thousands of readers exactly how the interaction is between the, the parents who are understanding one level of the uh, text and the kids who are understanding uh, the, uh, maybe the um, more of the bare storyline. Uh, right. To what extent uh, th there's, there's some kind of interaction. Um, I want to move on now to, your, to the third in this trilogy. What? We move I'm forwards honest. and backwards because it does fly. It does. Tempest, Tempest Fugate. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and here we are with the book that came out now, uh, very recently, Time Flies, and a few words about this wonderful book. Well, God, it, it was tough to come up with a third book in the series because I'm like, okay, the first one deals with numbers. The second one is with letters. What is something else I can do? Ah. And then I finally thought, Okay, children in elementary school, they're learning to tell time. Although now they don't have to know time anymore because Siri and Alexa just tell them what time it is all the time. <laughs> um, but they're learning to tell time. That's an, is something else they're learning in school along with numbers and letters. So that's how I came up with that concept. And it also deals with letters. I'm not going to give it away if you haven't read it. But uh, so that's how I ended up with that one. And I was uh, I was late to my deadline. You know, the publisher gives you a deadline. We want to see the manuscript by X date. And I'm like, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> and it, I think I was three or four months late to the deadline. Shh. Don't tell other publishers that I did that. Um, but, you know, you have to get it right. I, you you were overdue because time flies, Tara. Time flies. And it took me a while to come up with a concept. And, you know, the concept is what's important. If the concept doesn't work, the whole thing falls apart. Well, it's hilarious. And um, uh, if you don't want to give it away, can, do you want to show uh, any of your books? Did you bring any books to show the audience? Here, you could put them in here. Like you could go back and do the video and go, oh, here's Tara's book right there. No, I my, don't have any books right my, within my, my grab. My, my <laughs> technological prowess is not what you think it is. Um, <laughs> I'm strained to do this. Um, but anyway, I mean, you're, you're, you're so well known and, uh, and I recommend that people run out and buy at least five of your books. How many so far? Um, this year, uh, that was my 12th book. So I can say a dozen. And the, and the next year, the Bar Mitzvah book, <laughs> which is yeah. called which is called um, flat cat is out next. And that will be my 13th book. I have four books under contract right now. Wonderful. And you should. So um, I, we're going to uh, come back another time uh, because I really want to pick your uh, um, fertile brain on where these quirky, wacky ideas come from. Um, Story -story. No, they don't. <laughs> I don't participate in my own challenge because it's too much work just putting it together that I really don't participate in it. But I do um, try to come up by, with ideas all the time. And I keep them on my phone in a notes app 
So, and that's uh, uploaded to the cloud. So then I never lose them. I don't write them on little scraps of paper that I lose. Uh, learned that lesson a long time ago. And um, so I try to come up with ideas, you know, as often as possible and write them down. And so okay, I but it, it, throughout uh, the year, but not in January. <laughs> most of my career I spent as a scientist and inventor, and I've written a lot about where ideas come from, and someday we'll have a talk about that. But wow. where do your where do your ideas come from? Like the ideas for these books, a uh, you know, bloop. It's a wonderful idea of a, of an alien that comes oh. to Earth and decides that the ruling dogs species are, are dogs. Yeah. Um, where do these ideas come from in your head? Well, I I don't know. My my dad was a very funny guy. Um, had a dry sense of humor, very sharp wit. So when I was growing up, my brother and I kind of got a lesson in how to be funny. Um, and I don't know, I used to go around and say to people, you know, when I go to parties, I don't really talk to the people at the parties. I play with the pets. Um, and I was at this one party and they had this gorgeous, huge house and they had these two dogs, these pampered pooches. And I said to a friend of mine while I was petting the dogs, I'm like, you know, if aliens came down to earth, they think these dogs were in charge. And she said, Tara should be your next book. And I'm like, oh, so it's a combination of trying to be funny and then realizing, oh yeah, I could turn that into a story. Uh, so that's kind of the way it is. <laughs> I, 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 I'm really happy you said that because I don't believe that our cognitive minds really can understand fully where the ideas come from. Um, and we'll talk about that some other time. The other <laughs> thing that we won't have time to talk about today is uh, you're a great believer in dummy books. Oh, not necessarily the whole dummy book, but you should know the format for what you're writing. And when I first started, remember that critique group I talked about way back then when, and most were hobbyists and they weren't serious and, and they really didn't know the format of a picture book. And I didn't know. I didn't know it was 32 pages. And I, I, I just, I don't know why that never came into my brain. So the day that I learned about what a dummy looks like and how many pages it is in the page terms, I wrote that blog post on my blog. Um, I came home and I said, the best way for me to learn something is to type it out, you know, go through it and type it out for myself. So that's what I did. And I said, I might as well throw this up on the blog um, and tell everybody else that information wasn't out there readily available. I had to be scolded by an editor that my book was too long because I had too many jokes that were really page breaks and i had like a million page breaks in a 500 word story um yeah 500 words is great that length is terrific but if you have a joke that's dependent on a page turn and you've got like a million of them it's not going to fit in a picture book so i so, so i think that's really important to know the format for what you're writing because Every form of writing has a different format. You know, when I first began, people said, you know, you should get other writing credits so that when you go to submit something, they see that you're already published in another genre. Is that you should write magazine stories. Writing for magazines is very different than writing a picture book. It's, they're two totally different things. So it, writing for magazines doesn't give you any leg up. If you want to write picture books, write the freaking picture books, people. 
don't go off writing something else thinking you're going to get a publishing credit and look better. As we said earlier, it's the story that's the thing. The query letter doesn't matter. The publishing credits don't matter. matter. It's the story right in front of the agent or editor. It, the story is right there. The story is the thing. Work on the story. OK, Please. so listen, Tara. We're, we're running out of time for our wonderful interview today. Okay. Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? I had an excellent time. Can, can I book you again for 2023? Of course. Of so course. I'm I'm going to drink uh, l'chaim to that. Oh, very good. L'chaim to you too. And um, to all our listeners, um, this is uh, our last interview for 2022 and our first interview for the cusp of 2023. And um, I've been tickled pink, um, not in a literal sense, uh, to have you, uh, Tara Lazar, on the uh, show. And um, before we go, I just want to try and summarize, which I'm very bad at. So if you want to be a world famous author like Tara. I'm not world famous, but OK. You, you sure are. Um, I, when I started taking this uh, genre seriously, you were one of the first names. Um, so uh, number one, uh, learn your craft. Um, second, uh, find critique groups that you can leave. Or find the right critique group for you. Other people who want to be published in the same genre who know what they're doing. Okay, so I was being a bit facetious. So find find <laughs> the right critique, find the right critique group for for you, um, and um, write a amazing story. And don't fret uh, about the um, query letter. The, the query letter too much. Uh -huh. When you get an envelope, which really very few people get. Um, open it freaking <laughs> open it okay uh, go to meetings um make dates with mentors uh, with editors that you don't necessarily have to keep if you have a friend who works in the office um be a splendid author what have i forgotten yes a lot of uh, love. We, a lot yeah, of love. okay uh, reach out. I, I I don't believe in luck. Reach out. Well, luck is is opportunity meets preparation, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You were prepared. You got an opportunity. That's luck. And 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 perhaps most and and uh, like people ask me, why do I do this interview show? Um, I feel that if I can help writers and people interested in this genre understand it better um if i can grow um asking questions um this is like a wonderful thing that, that i'm doing and and i'm so honored to have people like you that agree to uh to be barbecued and um to uh well, thank you i i love being roasted well we're gonna we're gonna roast you again next year in that case um so Tara, with your new book, uh, Time Flies, it, there's another, there's like a colon and then there's more. Um, uh, what, what is the rest of it? Time flies. Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> it's okay, it's your book. Everybody run out and buy. It starts Time Flies and then there's a couple of words after the colon. Uh, we're not gonna give you the, uh, we're not gonna give you the uh, ending of it. Um, and um, Tara also has, uh, uh, absurd words out this year that we're going to talk about next time because I'm a word freak and um that's been great having been you on fantastic. the program so uh, Tara Lazar thank you so much have a wonderful year feel well and before I forget um my name is Mel Rosenberg uh, and I am the host of the children's literature channel of the new books network and everybody run out and buy Tara's books. She is incredible. 
Thank so, uh, you. Tara, this, this is great. So we're going to end the conversation. And if you could come back in a minute, then we'll just recap and, uh, and uh, share a few private matters. But for everybody else, run out and get the books and have a wonderful year. Happy New Year. Okay, it's going to take me a year to, to figure out how to end this. Uh, but <laughs> can, can you come back in a minute? Or just stay no, and I'm, I will... I'm right here. I'm just going to stay right here and you do what you need to do. Okay. 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 I don't know, but it's still... Uh, I don't know how to do this. Can you leave and come back? Oh, uh, yes. You want me to okay. leave? Fine. Yeah, because, no, because no. If, <laughs> it, we're still live on Facebook. I left and then I saw you on Facebook. Oh, okay. So, okay. You know, Hold people, on. I'm leaving. We're still, we're still being seen. So you leave and I'll leave. And then I'll we'll come leave back and then we'll to come the same back. Same URL. Yeah. Bye, everybody else. Bye.